Let's rise if you're able and let's go to our call to worship this morning. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of Christ, because of Christ God's, God's mercy, God's mercy, God's great mercy, we have been given a new birth into a living hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing together, He Lives.
seated. You who raise the dead to new life are our amazing God. Hear our prayers, praises, and thanksgivings for the continuing presence of Christ in our lives. Support us as we seek to walk with the risen Christ. Help us to recognize him in our message, to hear his voice, to feel his presence, to remember his teachings, encourage us to believe in him that we do not see. In the name of our living Savior, Amen. The risen Christ surprises his followers, saying, Peace be with you. Let us rise and share the peace of the Lord with each other. Amen.
we were discussing in Bible Adventures this morning um, that I was doing children's time, and so the kids prayed for me so that I would know the words to speak. We were talking about this idea of calling it children's time and thinking, like, we've got some kids who are less than children here. They're young adults or youth. And so Hunter su or Reese suggested calling it special time. I was like, I don't know. Then Mr. Rick and Mr. Ryan, I think they get to be part of it too. So I don't know. We have, we have, we have to, we don't have an age limit. But we were talking. Um, so I want to talk to you guys today about Jesus' dream team. Okay. You guys know that he had disciples that kind of went with him and shared his message, right? Do you guys know who some of the disciples are? Do, tell me, do you know one of the names of one of the disciples? Matthew. Do you know that Matthew was a tax collector? That he, like, took money from people and, like, some of it went in his own pocket before he started going with Jesus? Does that sound like somebody who would be on Jesus' dream team? Uh, not really. Do you know another one? Peter. Do you think Peter threw a temper tantrum and cut off someone's ear in the Garden of Gethsemane? Does that sound like somebody who would be part of Jesus' dream team? Yeah, when Jesus was getting arrested. Does anybody know any other names? Do you know um, Mark? Do you know John? John, when he, they were going to the tomb of Jesus, John wrote his account of the story, the disciple who arrived at the tomb first. He could like to race to see who could get to the tomb first. He also fell asleep in the garden when Jesus asked him to keep watch. Dream team? Yeah, yeah not really. Um, so there's another one. His name is Thomas. And Thomas, when Jesus was teaching about the fact that he was going to be coming and he would go to heaven and prepare a place for them, and Thomas was like, I just don't get it. I, got it. Like, I, I mean, how could that possibly be? How will we know how to get there? And so he like asked a lot of questions. And then when Jesus came back from the dead, Thomas, his, all of his buddies were like, Thomas, Jesus rose from the dead. Mary came and told us that it was this angel. And they were like, Thomas, he's, he's alive again, just like he said he would be. And Thomas was like, mm, I don't know. I mean, like, until I put my hands where the nails went in his feet and his hands, I don't know. I'm not buying it, guys. And for the rest of his life, do you know what we still refer to him as? Doubting Thomas. And so they, the disciples were like, no, but really, he's here. And he's like, eh, prove it. It's like he was from Missouri. Do you guys know that Missouri is the show in the state? You gotta like, prove it to a Missourian. Do you Missourians again? No. <laughs> My dad is a Missourian. It's true. You really have to show them. And so when Jesus showed up and was like, hey, Thomas, Thomas was like, he saw the holes in Jesus' hands and in his feet. And he was like, I get it. You're right. You, wow, you're back. So doubting Thomas. You guys look at Jesus' dream team. Were those guys perfect? Mm -hmm. Were they like model Jesus citizens? Yeah. No, not very much so. And Jesus did that on purpose. Jesus picked people who weren't perfect. Because if his dream team was actually a dream team, I don't know about you, but I feel like I'd probably never be a part of it. Do you feel like you could be on it if you like if that's what Jesus' dream team looked like in the Bible? Do you think you'd qualify? I I for sure wouldn't. Ask my kids, they'll tell you. I for sure would not qualify. And so Jesus picked people who were real live humans, who made mistakes, who messed up, and they were still his disciples, and they still spread his word. And that's to teach us that we also don't have to be perfect to be a part of Jesus' dream team, that we can continue to spread his message and do his work, even if we sometimes mess up. Okay? All right, guys, you guys want to say a prayer with me? All right. Dear God, Thank you so much for picking people who weren't perfect to represent you. Thank you for picking the tax collectors and the doubters and the ones who kind of got angry sometimes and the ones who couldn't keep their eyes open when they were supposed to be keeping watch. Lord, thank you that you uh, help us to know that we're always good enough for you, that we are always enough even when we mess up. And that when we mess up, we can come to you and ask you for forgiveness and ask you for strength. We thank you for the gift of your son, that he made the ultimate sacrifice for us, and that he rose again. And that way we can live with you forever in that place that we don't have to understand entirely. We just have to know you're waiting for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'll be reading from John 20, 24 through 29. It's 989 in your pew Bibles. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. 
But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my fingers in the marks of the nails and my hands inside, I will not believe. From Jude one twenty two, Have mercy on some who are wavering. And from Psalm 44, 20-24. We have been forgotten, we have forgotten the name of our God or spread our hands to the strange God. Would not God discover this? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Because of you, we are being killed all day long and accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Rouse yourself. Why do you sleep, O Lord? Awake, do not cast us off forever. Why do you hide it in your face? Why do you forget our affliction and oppression? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, we come to you this morning humble. We ask that you would take us as we are, just like that beautiful lesson that came before us this morning. Um, Enough, flawed, imperfect, doubting sometimes. And fill us and fill your people with faith to believe, to make a difference in this world. Anoint your word this morning. Open our eyes and our hearts and our spirits to receive all you have for us, Lord. And we worship you this morning for living in and through us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, seeing is believing, right? My mom used to say she would look at me when I would tell her something and she would take her finger and put it on her eye and say, my eye. That means show me, right? Show me. Do I believe this? Sometimes it's hard to believe unless you see, right? Well, I have a story to tell you. There was a a lady who had a duck, and this duck was just everything to her. Her name was Daisy the Duck, right? There was a Donald Duck, but this was Daisy the Duck. And one morning, this duck just was not responding. She tried to wake the duck up, but she, it was laying there um, on the floor, and she lifted its head, and it fell right back down. So what did she do? She took it to the vet and was hoping that they could do something for her beloved duck, Daisy, right? So she goes to see the vet. He lets her, to, he lets her come in. It's an emergency. And he's, he, she's, she puts it on the examining table, and he lifts the head up, and it just plunks right down. He goes, ma'am, your duck is dead. <laughs> Well, uh, no, 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 we don't know that, that, that my duck, Daisy, is dead yet, please. Just run some labs and tests and scans. All right, he goes, ma'am, I've been a vet for 25 years. I've seen a lot of ducks in my time, and this duck is dead. Have faith in me. <laughs> well, she said no. She was, she was one of those ladies. She wanted to make sure that his word was true, so she said, show me. I need to have some test results. I need to have some scans. All right, all right, he said. He said he went over and opened the door in his office, and out came a black lab and went up, jumped up on top of the examining table and sniffed the, the duck from one end to the next and looks at the vet, and he shakes his head. It jumps down, he goes back into the the room, and he shuts the door, opens another door, out comes a cat. The cat jumps up, right up on top, sniffs that dog on cat, or that duck from one end to the next, looks at the vet, shakes its head. Jumps down, goes back into his room, and the vet says, all right, well, you've had a lab, a lab test and a cat scan, and this duck is dead. (laughs) You have to believe it, to see it, to believe it. It's true. (laughs) But, you know, seeing is believing, isn't it? And we're living in one of these worlds. It's a physical world. We want to see results, right? Show me, show me. Just don't tell me. We want to see it. We want to be able to feel it. And science, after all, tells us that believes in empirical fact and evidence for it to be what? Truth, right? I just want to just encourage you, though, to 
see things from a different point of view this morning. Believing is seeing. You know that's true, right? So if you believe you're a failure and you've had all these mistakes and you start condemning yourself, you've lost your self-confidence, you go around saying, oh, my life is wrecked, I'm terrible, your, your world is going to look what? Dark, right? But on the other hand, if you have, I know this is a bunch of hooey from the positive people in this world, but it's true. If you go around thinking that you're something, that you're enough, that you're wonderful, even your mistakes, your failures, the times you slip and fall, all those things, you can see at work to give you future success. And there was a lady I just want to share really quick about this lady. Her name was Gladys Allwood. She was a missionary many, many, many moons ago in the 1930s. That's a long time, isn't it? What year are we in now? 2024? Well, that's a long time ago. But she had something in her heart that she knew was God. She felt that the Lord wanted her to be a missionary to the people of China. She was a single lady. She was working all day to, to make a living as a, a governess. She didn't have any relatives helping her out. She wanted to go to China. There was something in it. There was something, a calling that she had in her heart and life. She knew that she had to do it. If you have a passion, if you believe in something in your life, right, what's going to happen? Are you going to forget it if it's a passion? Or are you going to go down that lane, right? You're going to keep working and keep believing and keep trusting, right, until it starts to happen. Well, she called the British, she was from England, she called the British Missionary Society. She goes, I feel called to be a missionary to China. Can you help sponsor me? They said, what? <laughs> You're a single lady? You know, no. <laughs> She wrote them over and over and over and over and over again, and the answer was always what? Yeah, no. But she had a passion. She had a belief inside of her, strong belief that she was being called to China. You know, they even made a movie uh, about her. Um, Ingrid Bergman was, played her part in this movie. So you know what she did? She sold everything she had. She packed her suitcase and she bought a ticket to China, one-way ticket to China. And she became one of the first female missionaries to China and ended up taking over a position an older missionary had to leave. And he, he was managing a beautiful um, uh, group of orphan kids, and she took that over and... God used her in a mighty way because she believed and she went after it. Right? You have to go and keep going. That's the way it is in life, you know? To have faith is a difficult thing sometimes, right? When we can't see something with our eyes, we want to see, we want to feel, we want to experience. But there's a lot in life that God calls us to have what? Faith. So, you know, this was just kind of the way it was with Thomas, even though he had lived with Jesus for how many years? Three years, right? Traveled around. You know, they didn't go to the Marriott to spend the night at the Marriott and go jump in the pool at night after a long day of preaching and, and reaching out and healing people. They were laying on the, in, the, in the grass, in the dirt, sleeping with each other gathering what food they could find, three years of walking and seeing the, the miracles of the Master Jesus. And Thomas, though, had some doubts. And so he was named Doubting Thomas. <laughs> it's interesting. I think, you know, he was one of the most honest of the disciples. And it's difficult for any of us to experience something on faith alone. Even though he had seen the mighty miracles of Christ, you know, he experienced something traumatic. And that's when we have our doubts, right? That's when our fears come into play. That's when our doubts and all of our self-confidence go down, the, down into the tube, right? We lose it sometimes when something personal hits us. A loss that's personal. Many different things. Trauma. And here his leader, Jesus Christ, the mighty Lord and Savior, he saw him 
die terribly on a cross. And so all of his hopes and dreams, his wishes, his life plans were thrown down into the garbage, he thought. He was overwhelmed, and the doubts ensued. That's the way it was. Jesus came as a representative of God. Jesus came and showed us what God was all about, the physical evidence, expression. Walked on this earth and and healed and delivered and saved us, right? Jesus came here physically because he knows we have problem with faith, right? So he was there with the twelve. It was more than the twelve. There were another hundred that were following Jesus all at this time. And Christ came to reveal the mystery of God, the unseen kingdom of God, one in which faith rules. But Jesus lived in that believe-it-to-see-it world, and he carried out his mighty mission. He showed us what it was to live by faith and to reach out and touch people. Now in John 20, 24 to 29, you know, we see Jesus showing up after the resurrection. Now, I'm telling you, after that trauma, and we, I mean, I, how many have seen the, the, the movie, Mel Gibson movie, The Passion of the Christ? That's pretty graphic. It's pretty awful to see the kind of suffering that Jesus went through for us. And so that was so traumatic. Uh, he couldn't even see around that, even though Jesus had prepared him over and over again over that three-year period that he was going to die and raise again from the dead. He just couldn't believe it. He didn't want to believe it. He didn't want to have to reinvent his hopes and his, his desires and his dreams that Jesus had nurtured all those years. He didn't want to go there again. Jesus is dead. That's it. Get over it, right? We have to get over it and go on. He was just an average bloke. He's probably a fisherman a follower, apostle of Jesus, loyal, committed, but confused. It was overwhelming. His doubts ensued. You know, this is what happens to us as well when we have struggles with our faith. How many of you have ever had a struggle believing? (sighs) Be honest. If you go through something very personal, loss, a disappointment, that really hits and tears apart every fiber of your being, you wander and ask, Lord, why me? Why do I have to go through this? Are you really, do you really care about me? Do you understand what I'm going through? Right? We have those feelings. He was overwhelmed and, and he doubted. A young woman, her name was Florence Chadwick. She was one of those wonderful swimmers that, you know, swim the English Channel. Well, she was swimming out in California, and she had, she was on Catalina Island, and she was going to try to make a record, a record speed to go from Catalina to the California coast. And she got all prepared and smothered herself with Vaseline or whatever else they put on themselves. And she started out swimming. Then a fog, a heavy fog settled in a fog, and she was swimming in the ocean. Would that be hard? Yeah, that would be hard. There's not a smooth, it's not a smooth swim. She was uh, struggling, and finally she kept looking up, and all she saw was fog, and she was going and going and going, and finally she stopped and told her the boat that was, you know, driving alongside her to pull me in. I can't do this. All I can see is hopeless. When you're in this place in life where you're doubting and doubting and fear, fearful and you, you've lost something so dear or you've been disappointed, you don't want to go there again, you go, I can't look at hopeless anymore. You know, when we have challenges and we see a big giant and we're on a hillside and we have nothing, right? That's what David, remember with his little few stones? He was full of faith, so he could face that giant. But when we're full of doubt, we want to run and what? Hide. We feel guilty. We feel ashamed. We want to hide. We want to run. I'm sorry. I would have been one of those disciples that would have run and hit and shut the door and locked it. 
and probably moved a big bookcase over so those Romans couldn't come in and get me. I would have been like that. I'm just being honest. That's terrifying. They thought they were going to have to endure the same awful death. The scripture says in Psalm, Awake, O Lord, why do you sleep? (laughs) I love this psalm because I feel like this sometimes. You probably don't. Lord, are you sleeping on a job up there? (laughs) Arise, Lord! (laughs) Wake up! I need you in my life! Why? Why is this happening to me? Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our misery and our oppression? There are many times, if we're honest, that we doubt God. I'm telling you, when I'm in traffic in the city, and there's four or five lanes of traffic, and there's someone that goes like this and almost kills me, I wonder sometimes. I'm just being honest. Lord, I need those angels back on the bumpers, all right? Get going here now. (laughs) Right? There are times when we doubt. It's, it's just hard sometimes. Doubting is a common experience with us, and we might as well just admit it. And really, if you've never doubted, then you're not really thinking very deeply, trying to really figure this out, honestly. You know, it's true. You, when we are in a mess, we try to figure it out, and we try to put God in there somewhere, and we start doubting. We try to, to see what's going on. Doubting does not mean that your faith stops. It just means you're trying to understand things. You're trying to have faith. You're trying to go deeper into the Lord and find out what's really going on. Doubt can lead to faith. Do you know that? It's in those dark times that we really see God move. At least in my life, that's the way it's been. When it's been dark, the the sunshine comes, and I'm delivered. I tell you, working in the hospital, I tell you, that gives you a real big perspective on life. I'm not going to share with you any of my experiences because they're so depressing. (laughs) People come into the hospital because they're in dire straits, right? I mean, it could be a heart attack. It could be a, a, a urinary tract infection. It could be a stroke. It could be an accident. It could be a whole bunch of different things. But you're in crisis, right? So I see people all the time when they have crisis upon crisis upon crisis. COVID, remember that awful time, was not pretty in the hospital. I saw families come in. This one family I ministered to, they had 20 people in their family gather at Christmas time right in the middle of COVID. They thought, oh, we're going to be safe. Every single person in the family from grandma down to the baby, got COVID. Two people died. And what were they thinking? What were they saying? Why? Why? Where are you, God? How could this have happened? They were a good family. Why did this happen to us? Countless people lost their lives during that epidemic. Just so hard. The Bible says, be merciful to those who doubt. (laughs) Because we do doubt sometimes. Doubting is just such a common occurrence. Thomas's doubt turned into embrace a truly remarkable faith. You know, when he told the rest of the crew, Jesus' disciples, you know, I have to see it to believe it. That's just... So much like the way we are sometimes. We need to have a show me God, right? So Jesus appears. And he shows him his hands, his feet, his side. And they were touched by Thomas. Jesus isn't a ghost. You know that, right? This was not a ghost. That Jesus appeared. It was not a ghost. Say with me, Jesus was not a ghost. No! (laughs) No! is a physical being. I don't understand this. I have no way of understanding this. But he had a resurrected body, and he said, touch my nail-pierced hands and my side, and be not unbelieving, but believe. Wow. 
Thomas said, oh, my Lord and my God. Doubt that was turned to faith that served Jesus the rest of his life faithfully, even though we call him Doubting Thomas. He was a faithful believer in Jesus, and Jesus appeared, changed his life. There are so many places in life we've been that have been hair-raising. How many of you have ever been to Cedar Point? All right, there's a ride there years ago. Now, I'm not going to go on there anymore because I'm not, I'm not going to do that one to myself again. The demon drop. Horrible. How many of you have gone in the demon drop? No? What do you think about that ride? Oh, that's right. Oh, <laughs> I did not think it was a blast. To me, I'm going up, I'm going up, you're going straight up. And you hit there, and I think, I wanted to say, can I, can I climb back down now? Okay? And down it went. So there was terror, there was all kinds of things. I guess it can be fun for some crazy people. It's fun. <laughs> But life is like that roller coaster. We're just, we know something's coming. We hit the top and then we all the way back down. We're in terror. And it's holding on to the bar, holding on to Jesus, holding to God's presence that will get us through. And then we look back and go, my oh, gosh, I got through that. <laughs> How did that happen? Right? And that's life. That's all the different spots we find ourselves in life. We, on a roller coaster ride, and if we make it through, we're holding on. God delivers us. God mightily, mightily delivers us. This morning, don't knock yourself for doubting. There's been so many people that have doubted over the years, but allow those doubts to lead you to a deeper faith, a new level of belief. So maybe you are, I need to see it to believe it, but I pray that God will strengthen your faith this morning so you can uh, believe, and then you can see. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this time together. This talk about faith, it stirs in me just wanting to grow closer to you so that I can find peace and harmony and belief in my life. Bless this people that have come to worship you today. Bless them and keep them and strengthen their faith in the midst of their doubts, we pray. In your name, amen.
just go to the Lord in prayer and just um, have a, a moment of silence as we lift our hearts and our spirits up to God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Now is the time to receive our offering. sing our final hymn, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ.
Now receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you, be gracious to you, and fill you with his peace, his shalom, and faith. Go out and enjoy this day. Amen? Amen. Thank you.